exact color of the sun depends on how we view it, how much atmosphere its light has passed through, which leaves some portions of the spectrum more or less visible than they otherwise would be. So the sun can appear yellow to us most of the time. But it's made up of a number of different colors of light and a number of different frequencies are, which are very close to the visible. So the sun has a little over 40% visible light and much of the remainder is infrared or ultraviolet that's very close to visible light in terms of its wavelength. But whether you have something in the millions or in the thousands of degrees, it'll still give off a large percentage of its light in the visible range. So the vampire who says, well, the sun may not be in the millions, but I can do this calculation and bring its temperature down into the thousands, still ends up with a large portion of the light giving off, given off, still being in the range that's the most dangerous to vampires. So he's still getting fried anyway you look at it. On Earth, we can make an object glow so that it gives off visible light and the light will look white at temperatures of a few thousand degrees. But we can also explode a hydrogen bomb, create a momentary flash of energy that's much like the sun's on Earth. That is supposed to be occurring in the millions of degrees and yet it still gives off mostly visible light with the white color. So the object as described in the little heat engine has increased its degrees of freedom when you go from a few thousand degrees to a few millions of degrees. The, uh, the molecules are moving more freely. They're much hotter, but they're not giving off substantially different radiation as a result. And as the little heat engine essay claims, the object is not even giving off any more radiation as a result. So you get much the same response, whether it's thousands or millions. The object is still behaving in much the same way in terms of what radiation it gives off. From the vampire's perspective, that's not good because increasing degrees of freedom reflected in the increased temperature do not translate into blackness. The object won't turn black again as it gets hotter past a certain point. Stefan's law, as described in the story, is a relationship between the inside temperature of the walls of an empty space and the amount of radiation given off and received by those walls, which can be measured if you drill a hole in the side of the walls that enclose the empty space and measure how much radiation comes out through the hole. So it's essentially describing what goes on in something like an oven. And it doesn't uh, tell you the cause of the temperature inside the oven. There, the oven is essentially independent of the surroundings. And if you want to calculate the temperature of the oven, uh, you get into all sorts of trouble because the temperature inside an oven is not something you calculate, it's something you choose. If you want to cook your pizza at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, you turn the dial, and you pick the temperature, and that's what determines it. So Stefan's law gets used in some ways that become quite confusing when you try to use it to calculate something. It's not too bad if you use it to uh, calculate the internal temperature of an object as if it's behaving like an oven with the radiation coming out through the hole, as you do with the sun, as described in the story. There is a separate physical law that tells us how the light coming out of, from the sun disperses with distance on its way to the earth. So we can take the concentration of sunlight just outside the earth, reconcentrating it, reconcentrate it with this law, find an apparent intensity that should exist on what we think of as the surface of the sun, and then plug that intensity into Stefan's law to tell us the temperature of what we think of as the surface
surface of the sun. And back calculate that to get Stefan's law of temperature. But that gives an answer of about 6,000 degrees Celsius. And there's a disconnect between that and the cause of the radiation coming from the sun because the cause of it is supposed to be thermonuclear explosions, which should generate temperatures in the millions of degrees Celsius or Kelvin. So by taking that Stefan's log temperature, it doesn't tell us much about the process of how the sun, which is supposed to be millions of degrees, ends up radiating uh, with a signature that tells us it's only a few thousand. Also, as you go farther out from the sun, the radiation should be dispersing, and if it's caught, should generate us a lower and lower temperature. But in the corona of the sun, which is farther out from the photosphere, that's supposed to be 6,000 degrees, the corona is supposed to be about a million degrees. So the law that tells us we can determine how warm something will be based on how close it is to the sun is partly contradicted by the process of reconcentrating the radiation because there's one place in between us and the sun that is too hot to be explained by that relationship. So when you try to use Stefan's law to determine the cause of something, the cause of why something is warm, it doesn't really tell you necessarily what you want to know. What Stefan's law can tell you, I think, is a little bit about the worldview of the person who's using it. There are ways you can play with Stefan's law to give a desired answer. So the question becomes how someone will manipulate the equation to get the view of the Earth or the solar system that is desired. Stefan's law is a way of describing the behavior of what's called a black body. A hollow object with a hole drilled in the side to let the radiation escape. Vampirism celebrates blackness, the absence of color, and in many ways it can symbolize the forbidden, freedom to break rules, sexuality, and so on. And black appears on the cover of Evolve 2, Twilight, and other vampire books. With Stefan's Law, the description of the behavior of a black body, there's a correction factor one can employ to choose a blackness level for an object. It's called the emissivity, and it tells how efficiently an object gives off radiation and also how efficiently the ob object absorbs radiation. If you look at a cave on the side of a mountain on a sunny day, and the entrance to the cave is relatively small, and the inside of the cave is a relatively large space, you can follow the path the light takes with your eyes, and the area inside the cave will look dark because it will be too much area to be illuminated by the small amount of light entering the cave. That's one of the ways we can think of a black body because it absorbs all the incoming radiation and yet doesn't give much sign that it's done so. If you use the assumption that the sun operates like a black body when you apply Stefan's law, that means that the sun doesn't have a very high temperature and that it emits radiation very efficiently. Any radiation it could give off is given off. So the sun has an emissivity near 100%, or 1, when that number is plugged into the equation. The reverse way you could try to look at the sun would be to treat the sun like a white body, or a nearly white body. That would mean that you could plug a very high temperature into the equation and compensate for it by making the emissivity very close to zero. Then the sun would be very hot, but it would not let out the energy in the form of radiation very efficiently. This could give a means of partially resolving the paradox that was just discussed. A black body is also supposed to give us a window, a hole, through which we can essentially look into its interior by examining the radiation that comes out then we can see inside it so to speak the sun doesn't quite operate that way completely the corona the outermost layer is 
screens out a portion of the radiation coming at us from underneath it, from the, from the photosphere. So some of the, what's coming from the photosphere is actually intercepted by the corona, which would be like the wall of the oven. Also, the things we use to study black bodies are typically solid and hollow, and the sun, in, although it's under a tremendous amount of gravitational pressure, when you look at a picture of it, or a movie, it seems to be heaving and boiling and throwing out portions of itself that fall back in. So in that respect, it doesn't look like a solid. It behaves a little bit more like a liquid or a gas. And when something changes from solid to liquid or gas, as they say in the little heat engine, it takes on additional degrees of freedom. And during that interval, when it's changing phase, you can heat it more and it won't give off more radiation as a result. Because some of the energy is going into making it increase its degrees of freedom. With black bodies that we create on a small scale on Earth, they are set up for experimental purposes. The efficiency with which they give off radiation, the emissivity, and the temperature are chosen by the people doing the experiment. So you, you pick the temperature and you, you know what it is, or you can measure it. That's not the same case with the sun. We can't go down there and choose the temperature of the sun, or put a thermometer in there and measure it directly. Also, if the, what we call the photosphere of the sun is really 6,000 degrees Celsius approximately, and we know that the interior is in the millions, then on that scale the sun is not operating like a black body because a black body should have the same temperature all over the inside of it. And if the, black, the, the surface is 6,000 of the black body, then it's not operating like a black body because a black body is supposed to give us a window into its insides to show how they work. If we've got the temperatures that differ from each other to that degree, then we aren't getting a good window.